uh, <coughs> and we have a long, uh, probably 10 years uh, collaboration with Simon Lin and his group uh, on, under the DMCC uh, disaster mitigation. So uh, I'm very happy to share some experience on, on this uh, experience. So uh, this is me, and I'm currently I'm working at uh, National Central University, and I just stepped down from the uh, director of hydrological and oceanic sciences. And if you want to uh, uh, contact me, you can uh, you can use email or use Facebook. Okay, I will start from very uh, convention uh, tsunami. Uh, introduction that is the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami and uh, uh, an earthquake. All right. So uh, it happened in 2004, and here I don't want to emphasize the detail. Just uh, uh, give you some uh, thought that uh, after this event, what did we learn from 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 it? So our uh, event happened here, and uh, the earthquake magnitude was very huge. Uh, it reached to 9.3, uh, ranked as second one in the history, in the human history. And um, the rupture that lands is roughly uh, 1,500 kilometers long. That is extremely long. So um, by the time we have the animation for that, and uh, you can see, the resolution is very poor, right? <laughs> and by the time we uh, we were very happy to to see this result, all right. And uh, also we have the arrival time for that, but this was for Noah, because uh, Simon and uh, uh, Eric told me I have to change my result uh, the details, so <laughs> I just grabbed some results from from Noah, but very similar, all right. And uh, this event caused a very uh, uh, large number of deaths, uh, 290,000 people or more dead. And I visited there. That one, in, one thing impressed me was the wave high. The wave high, uh, he, here you can see this uh, three floor uh, building. And each floor actually is uh, roughly this, this high. So three floor is roughly 10 meters tall, and you can see the roof is swept away by the tsunami wave. And I often being asked uh, how to survive in tsunami, and my answer is only one, don't get wet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to answer the question, because if you are facing this kind of huge Lot. How can you survive? I don't know. So try to keep dry. That's all. How to keep dry? Uh, wrong. Go come uh, higher. All right. <clears throat> so from this event, a lot of uh, scientists or researchers thought they learned a lot from this event and also from the Chile earthquake. That is, the giant earthquake usually often occurred and not often by the time they say always occurred on a very long and straight change, okay? And uh, unfortunately, uh, when people thought uh, they are very understand the earthquake and the tsunami, then 2011, the, another tsunami happened. That is the Tohoku earthquake and the tsunami. As you, as you can see, the tectonic plate actually is not a very large plate and I say locally is this happened here actually is the interest interaction between <clears throat> one two three four four plate usually people before this event 2011 or earthquake event people thought here the largest earthquake you might uh, exceed magnitude 7.8 or 8.0 <clears throat> but unfortunately this time the earthquake uh, magnitude was 9.1, and the length, the, the rupture length is relatively short, only have 500 kilometers. So that gives us a lot of uh, 
so uh, in the academic uh, area, we actually start thinking uh, maybe we have to uh, facing the nature hazard, we have to uh, raise the, the, the safety uh, level because uh, if we don't know what really is going to happen. So lessons learned from the okay, 2011 Tohoku earthquake. Uh, one is the, the devastating earthquake will occur on a long and a straight change. No, I just say it might not. And the other questions like uh, the tsunami disaster can be prevented by coastal vegetation. Uh, we don't know, maybe yes or maybe not. Or the RC building, uh, reinforced concrete building can against the tsunami wave. Uh, well, we don't know. Usually people think yes. And uh, the tsunami war can against the tsunami, can really against the tsunami. Because people think uh, when the tsunami comes, we can just build a wall to against that. And also, um, the tsunami early warning can rely on the, the coastal buoy. And the last question, sorry, uh, I I didn't change trans transfer this one into English. Uh, the last the last one is um, the tsunami early warning because uh, often people just uh, calculate to the shoreline area. They didn't do the inundation because the, if you want to uh, simulate the tsunami inundation. That uh, requires much more time and uh, higher uh, computer technique. So people usually think hey, uh, we can calculate arrival time to the coastline. Then that is now. So I put a lot of question mark here, and I'm going to uh, give you some examples for those questions. The first one is the the uh, the, um, the pine tree. Um, or as we say, the coastal vegetation uh, distributed along the, the, the beach. This is located at Rikusen Takata City. Sorry, I'm, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> All right. Takata. Okay. This is a beautiful uh, trees here. And unfortunately, uh, the tree is actually destroyed by the huge tsunami. And only one pine tree left. And uh, this pine tree was called Pine Tree of Hope. Just like uh, previously, I showed you the boat. There's only the boat on the roof. There's hope, uh, boat, uh, hope of the <laughs> boat. Okay. Uh, the, the thing is that um, the the pine tree actually not only destroyed by the, the tsunami, it become, became debris and the debris can make more extra damage to the disaster. So to answer the, the question if the, uh, the coastal vegetation can really protect people, the answer is yes or not. If the wave high is not over the, the tree, Usually, yes, the tree can survive. But if the wave high higher than the tree, then the tree can bring the moment, mom, momentum and the hit the building and the people and the cause severe damage. Okay, so this is the first question. The second question: the RC building can sustain can can survive in the tsunami event. Unfortunately, here shows uh, a lot of examples that. The building was destroyed. This building was not been pushed over by the tsunami, but <laughs> it's, it's break broke directly and the turned over in the tsunami wave. So the tsunami uh, wave force reached to about 50 tons per square air, square meter. So if you want to say if the building can against tsunami, the answer is still yes and not. Because uh, if the building consider the wave force, then the answer will be yes. But if not, then the, the answer is not. Then the other slide will show you some buildings uh, in the tsunami. 
Okay, so this is uh, the uh, building in in which city? Let me see. Uh, Oh yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, there are there were two buildings. One is the city hall. The other is city office. Okay, the city hall was beautiful and uh, totally destroyed by the tsunami. The other one is city office. Okay, this is the city office after the tsunami. It looks okay because it kept the ship. But if you look at the details, you can see that debris actually penetrate the buildings. So even though the building survived, but the people cannot survive in the building. OK, so uh, the next example is the sea wall. OK, uh, the sea wall sometimes called the Great Wall by the local resident. Okay. In, uh, in Japan, we have they have the very huge and the beautiful sea wall. The seawall was too so huge. This is the regular seawall. This is the Great Wall. Okay. And unfortunately, the seawall still cannot survive in the tsunami attack. So does that mean the tsunami, the, even though the biggest seawall cannot get the tsunami? The answer is still yes and or not. This is the other side of the seawall. The seawall only, only have a small section left survive in the in the event. But even though that survived, this side of the other side of the building was destroyed. <clears throat> Here shows another strange example. This is the um the seawall built by a village, uh chief of the village uh 30 years ago. Uh the seawall you can see that is much thinner than the, the previous one. But much taller. This wall, sea wall, was 15 meters tall. And the the village chief actually uh, was argued by the, the the people in their village because they think that the sea wall was too expensive, and it's not necessary to build a sea wall that tall because the uh, the other one is just 10 meters tall. This one is 15 meters tall. But in that, uh, but the, the chief uh, uh, insists to build uh, this uh, 15 meter sea wall because he said in history, in the history, 19, uh, 1896, um, the, the tsunami high was 15 meters. So uh, if the sea wall was not tall enough, high enough, then it's useless. So this is the only one sea wall that survived in the event. So if, if the sea wall can against the tsunami, the answer is still yes and or not. If, if the sea wall is tall enough, yes, it's not. If not, then not, <clears throat> even though it's huge, but still. So that tells us that uh, to estimate the tsunami height well, is very extremely important for the hazard mitigation. Okay, so this shows the results, totally different results. Huge, but not tall. Thin, but tall enough. So that tells you that uh, grow your children taller. That will help you a lot. Okay. <laughs> Just joking, okay. Uh, um, so uh, uh, another thing is the tragedy of Okawa Elementary School. So this uh, event was famous because uh, uh, there were 70 uh, students died and uh, nine teachers uh, lost their life in this event. This location uh, he is here. OK, uh, actually, this is ocean and the big river and uh, they're located here. Okawa, the name was uh, Big. So they treat the big river as the mother. And unfortunately, in this event, the tsunami uh, actually flood along the river. The, the event, uh, surprise, not surprise, uh, make people think again was because uh, actually in this event, the teachers have uh, more than 15 minutes to escape the students. When the earthquake happened, the 
based on their SOP. The teacher lead the student to escape to the ground. This is correct. But after that, they uh, uh, there, there was some uh, information about the tsunami will come, but like the teachers um, really they, they probably don't believe that because in the in the, in the past in the history they never have a, a tsunami really reached to that deep. Okay. <clears throat> so they still uh, leave the students on the ground and uh, waiting for the another information. So uh, before the uh, seven minutes before the the tsunami came, uh, the, the finally the teacher think the the tsunami is really coming. So they lead the students. Here's the school to the bridge, the suspension bridge. It's very very normal because. Uh, um, the, the school actually is high ground, and the land was um, used as a, a escape area. And not to say this suspension bridge. So people think suspension bridge is uh, might be tall enough, so and very close. So they just uh, lead the students run to the bridge. But unfortunately, before they reach the bridge, the tsunami came. So pe most of the students died. The, the students really reach the, the bridge. This is the bridge. Unfortunately, the bridge was blocked by the tsunami. So even though they can reach to that, that point, they still cannot survive. Only a few students and the teachers reach to the, the mountain side. Sorry. Here is the, the mountains here, and they survive. So after this event, uh, the uh, lots of um, parents um, argue that how come the teacher won't let the student go to the mountain because they have field trip to the mountain uh, before. And the, the survivor teacher so said because uh, they, are, they are afraid of landslide <coughs> and the tree falls. This is very reasonable. All right. <coughs> so this event actually tells us that um, if you do the hazard mitigation without really consider the inundation, you might give people two mistakes. First, people, the regular people, normal people can. It's very difficult to estimate the tsunami arrival time, not the close to their house. It's very difficult to estimate the the time lag. From the coast to coast to their their buildings. <coughs> In this case, they don't know what's the time lag. Secondly, they don't know which area is is safe. They just they they, they based on their experience lead the students to stay here and then run to the building. Two mistakes. Both are wrong. Okay. If they have a very detailed uh, simulation or a sin, uh, scenario study for the inland area, they might know here is the only safe area, safe safety area. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the uh, one tragedy that um, actually help people to really think again about the tsunami hazard mitigation. So. Uh, um, and let's go back to what I did in Taiwan. So in Taiwan, uh, our government and uh, our people, uh, Open X, will Taiwan uh, be attacked by tsunami. So um, this, um, so I try to answer the question uh, from two, four aspects. One is the distribution of the change nearby. Second is the historical record. The third one is some deposit, sediment deposit and tsunami borders. The last one is my scenario study. So this is the, the, the change distribution uh, obtained from USGS. Here you can see um, on the east side of Taiwan is the large plate is called Philippine plate, sea plate, Philippine sea plate. And 
here have a lot of changes. And color in red means uh, uh, has uh, the appraisal is high. As you can see, this issued in 2006, I remember 2006, before the 2011 Tohoku earthquake. You can see Tohoku earthquake actually already colored in red. And the other colored in red is the, uh, this one, Nankai Cho. The third color in, colored in red is the Manila change. So that's uh, things we missed one. We should have missed the second one and then the third one. So um, then uh, our uh, most, uh, it was it's similar to the NSF in USA. Uh, asked me to do the, uh, the, the a study to, to figure out how many uh, what's gonna affect uh, Ch what kind of tsunami will affect Taiwan? So I uh, organized a uh, lot of meetings uh, to collect people from uh, from geoscience, from earthquake, and <coughs> to 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 make this map. So this map tells us that the largest possible uh, earthquake um, might happen along the change. So uh, you can see here, uh, my large change is short. We separate this one into one segment, two segments, three, four, four segments. So um, uh, uh, the, the earthquake, the largest potential earthquake will relate here to the length of the segment. So this one is short, so we say it's 8.2. But maybe the next version, we will link these two together because no, we don't know if the earthquake can really stop at this point from here to here. But anyhow, this is the first version. So 8.2, 8.4, 8.6, 8.0, and uh, so on and so forth. So before I show you the results, I'm going to show some model uh, that uh, speed up by uh, Dr. Lin's group, uh, speed up a, a lot. This model is called ComCut. ComCut model is a corneal multi-grid uh, coupled tsunami model. It was very famous in the academic uh, area. So people use this model to do the research. And uh, this model has a lot of uh, uh, capabilities. First, like because the multi-grid, so you can use a very coarse grid up to connect to a very small grid, uh, link them uh, together and uh, two-way coupled. The, so that means that we can do the tsunami simulation for a very huge area and up to very small scale. So it can cover the whole tsunami life. And then this model can solve the linear and the nonlinear shallow water equation, um, both uh, or either spherical or Cartesian coordinate. It's, very, it's a very strange model that can do this kind of strange thing. <laughs> but <laughs> it's very useful because uh, if your scale is large, then uh, sphere, spherical coordinate is, is should be the, the only choice. And use the multi-grid. And they, they can use do the move, moving boundary. Moving boundary is very important because that means that we, I can calculate the, the inundation from the dry from the wet area to the dry area. Okay. So uh, it was very good in re in research. Why I emphasize um, in research because it takes uh, usually takes three to six hours to finish one case. So when we finish the case, the tsunami event finished. <laughs> so it's useless. No, I mean, usually to a hazard mitigation. So fortunately, uh, EMCC group helped me to paralyze this, um, this code and make this code very fast. <clears throat> and this one is also being widely validated. Uh, I just show you one, you one example. This is a very famous example. It's solitary wave, uh, run up and the run down. So this is the comparison between this is the slope and then the wave coming in and the run up and the going back. And the dot line, uh, dot lines are the uh, laboratory results. Solid line, solid line is the uh, my the numerical the simulation. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, functions in this model, and the, the most important issue is the model was developed by my advisor. So I have no choice. 
<笑> you know, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is a uh, fair pass. Too crazy. Wow, I hear the sound. Wow, too crazy. This is a the 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 cluster that makes people happy, <laughs> make the nerve. Wow, my computer is stuck. Yeah, <laughs> you can see the the fan. <laughs> okay, so um. When we finish this model, then we have a chance to practice this case. Then 2011 Tohoku earthquake happened. So we spend about 20 minutes to pre to 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 wait for uh, NOAA and USGS to to report the earthquake parameters, the detailed parameters. After that, when we receive the the, the data, uh, Kangpa only spend one minute to finish the tsunami simulation from Japan to Taiwan. So it's be even beyond the real-time simulation. So uh, by the time uh, uh, our uh, hazard mitigation um, institute uh, under the government is called NCDR, they called me, asked me what's going to happen because uh, uh, you can see the news report saying uh, the people mm -hmm. in Taiwan, some female students were, were, were crying because they think they, they, this is their last day in their life. So people in Taiwan were nervous. Then they asked me, what will the wave high be? And I say, 12. Okay. I still remember this, this joke. <laughs> and then the NCTL, the people on the other side, I can hear that. Tough. And they 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 are they're very nervous because they have to organize and ask the president to to uh, join join their their meeting. I say twelve centimeters, and you can hear the the, the other side of the phone. And they say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then after that, the the, the great gauge data shows twelve centimeters. So this is the the the, the first version simulation results. Okay, so by Comcast. So the wave will uh, actually is behaves like an edge wave coming along the uh, neutral change and the, to Taiwan, and the wave was very small. But um, mo most of people don't understand tsunami by that time. They think Japan and Taiwan was very close, and uh, the tsunami in Japan so scary. They must will cause damage in Taiwan. So, <clears throat> okay, so then I compare the results with some gauge. One is uh, uh, the gauge in Japan, and here is uh, time history wave high. Uh, one is the observation, the other one is the simulation result. I have to say uh, this is very accurate, because if you know, then the tsunami uh, wave high prediction uh, smaller than 100% is called accurate. <laughs> <laughs> this one is very, very accurate. The other one is from uh, USA NDBC and still amazingly good, yeah, even better. And ironically, the, on the other side of Japan, uh, in Russia, they received some signals, very, very small, only 10 minutes. 10 centimeters, but we can we can also ca capture the, 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 the wave high. So very good. But most importantly, can we really have a good result in Taiwan? Because the wave has to pass a lot of small island in along the <laughs> Rokyo Cho. But you can see the result comparison is very, very, very good. Right. So our government um, asked me to do the study. To, to figure out it was there really some damage in Taiwan. Then I do the simulation. So this map, this one is very important, I think. This is called the nest grid, nested grid I used by that event. I use six layer. Actually, never have any people use six layers. The six layer, from about 3.5 kilometers up to two meters. Okay, 
and I that overlap a, a, a lot. So along Taiwan, we have two meters. Some places, for example, close to the uh, nuclear power plant, the resolution <coughs> even up to one meter, and including the inundation. So we can people can really know what happened when the wave flood to the inland area. <coughs> and um, but if you want to do if you, you if you were do, doing the tsunami uh, simulation, you might know that uh, the part in the public domain, the fancy resolution you can get probably is 500 meters. Then how to obtain the two meters <coughs> resolution? This is the secret of of uh, <laughs> not classify the data. So uh, uh, in this event, in this case, is uh, our national president asked the military to provide me the data. Okay. <coughs> So sometimes we need uh, some opportunities that can get the result. <coughs> so as you can see, the source of the symmetry <coughs> included the <coughs> ETOPO, GAPCO, and from Navy, and from NCU is my, my university, and from the satellite, and uh, DEM, and also Thai Power Company. Our co power, Thai Power Company uh, asked people to Ride the boat to use the the stick to to measure the, the water depths, and the resolution can reach to one meter. <laughs> Very cool. <clears throat> so this is some scenario uh, for the initial wave high. Uh, we even consider the asperity. Asperity means that the the wave, the initial wave, is not uniform in the in this direction. You can see here is higher. Here is higher because. Uh, uh, as uh, in the Tohoku earthquake, you can see that uh, the rupture uh, dislocation is not uniformly distributed. Some places is much higher than other places. So we have some paper published uh, to discuss this uh, percentage. <coughs> so this is the result. <coughs> oh, sorry, I, I missed the, the first scenario. The first scenario was here. This is the second scenario. The second scenario shows that uh, this is uh, the north part of Manila change, and the wave will, will attack Hong Kong and Macau, and also Taiwan. And also here, they have uh, in mainland China, there's a, a nuclear power plant. The number three will attack Hong Kong and Macau, and uh, the next one will attack mainly Hong Kong, Macau, and also uh, Vietnam. And not to say the Philippines. Philippines, yeah, definitely. And here is Manila city. And here we'll transfer the energy to Japan. So you can see if the coastline is colored in red, then uh, that will be dangerous. So the other one is uh, the old very strange Japanese is on, but Taiwan looks like off. So the 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 yap change, the number eight will project the energy to Taiwan directly. So in Taiwan, we were very clear about this event. Number nine, Mariana change, and the first change just beside uh, the yap change, where the energy will totally goes to Japan. And uh, the number two, uh, the, the number ten still to Japan, and uh, number 11 to Philippines, and also Japan. It's very odd. You did Hawaii also? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. And Guam, Guam is recently covered, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Guam is covered. And here is Japan. And the next Japan, 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 Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Japan is the home of the tsunami. <laughs> and it's a uh, Definitely, the tsunami should be named by Japanese language. <laughs> because from the 18th uh, scenarios, only three will, three to four will attack Taiwan. Others, almost all, all the events will go to Japan. Like I like to travel to Japan. <laughs> so in Taiwan, uh, I tell the our government that. Uh, we have to be very care careful about uh, some scenarios. So one scenario is uh, underneath Taiwan, that's uh, Manina Man Man change. 
and uh, from the GRO, it's very famous uh, uh, relationship between the earthquake magnitude and the return period. So GRO shows a straight line that helps us to predict a larger tsunami, uh, so large, the, the return period of larger earthquake. So here shows the earthquake from 8.5, the return period is about 200 years, and the 9.0 is about 700 years. So it's a very regular, <coughs> regular uh, return period. And also uh, from the GPS uh, measurement, it shows that the tectonic plates against each other, the largest uh, is the, the this displacement is around here. So this also shows if here have something happened that will attack Taiwan. So uh, then we publish a paper that um, uh, saying uh, if you if we consider all the events uh, along the might not change, then what's going to happen? So it shows the energy distribution in this map. So this map shows that uh, most of the energy actually coming from the largest uh, dislocation will reach to Hong Kong, Macau, and the Taiwan. Like that's right. T two, T three, T four, and T five. Actually, T two will goes to here and here. T three will goes to here, and T T four will not go, transfer to here. So it's directly to 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 Vietnam, and the T T T five is to my last city. So then that this this paper makes people in Hong Kong nervous. <laughs> so a uh, lot of uh, uh, news uh, interviews <coughs> from Hong Kong. So this is the animation from for T2. <coughs> so uh, then I zoom in Taiwan. The Taiwan is very small here, and you can notice that some places were colored in red. So on the end of here, make uh, our government very nervous because. Um, we have a uh, nuclear power plant number three located here. Not to say here's a, a, fam a famous uh, tourist spot. It's called South Bay, a very be beautiful beach here. <coughs> so uh, our government was very uh, serious about this result. So they asked the Thai power company to have some uh, strategies for a tsunami uh, event. And also the government have the first nationwide uh, tsunami drill in Taiwan. And <coughs> here's, this is my name. And here is some uh, uh, directors in different departments in the government. And as I usually say, this seat, uh, you said this is drill. If this is not drill, this, is, this seat is for the national president. <laughs> so they, they treat this, uh, the, the Seriously, but the results serious. And uh, the Thai power company uh, now is building seawall uh, to prevent the, the tsunami event. And before the one before. Ah. The height here was at least ten meters. Eighteen. So, okay. It's over. Some place 80 meters. 18, and here is 12, and here is the coastline, and here you can see the inundation. Oh, well, the coast was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, the wave will flood it's to the. Uh, it's very dangerous. Yes. So how? What is the height of the nuclear power plant here? 12. No, the the the, the wall. Uh, actually, the ground is 12. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so uh, but uh, based on the law for the nuclear power plant, yeah. they have to consider the buffer zone. Yeah. So they build, uh, even 12, they build six meters tall. Okay. Yeah. Because, uh, just as I said, we are, no people can really 100% say oh, the tsunami is 12, then 12. Mm -hmm. Then uh, this afternoon, okay, this evening, uh, um, my students gonna show something about the model and the uh, uh, DMCC and under the lead of uh, Dr. Lin, they even um, created uh, the cloud-based tsunami system. It's called ICOMCA. All right. 
So you can use that one on iPhone and iMac, iBook. <laughs> <laughs> I watch, no. Uh, <laughs> okay, I watch. <laughs> no. All right. So uh, uh, it was interviewed by uh, UK and uh, also, uh, also have uh, invited a speech from UNESCO. Actually, uh, last year we also have uh, uh, a talk in in Xiamen for UNESCO. <clears throat> and uh, National Geographic uh, has a report on, on this. And uh, most, which is uh, NSF, similar to the NSF in the USA, have a, a, a column for that. Then uh, we built a, a tsunami fast calculation system for our Central Weather Bureau. Um, this system can is very important because uh, when the earthquake happened, usually people can get the very early information for in one minute. The information include <coughs> longitude, latitude, which is the location of the earthquake and also the focal depths, and also the earthquake magnitude. Okay, but if we want to do a real, really uh, tsunami simulation, we need much more than this information. We need actually include the strike deep sleep angles, and also the rupture length and width, and also this location. So this is for, we, people will get the information in one, maybe 1 to 1.5 minutes and the, to here maybe 20 to 30 minutes. So, but tsunami is dangerous and we need time. So we build a, a test calculation by Hong Kong. <laughs> Sorry. How to do that? Um, we have another paper published that is uh, based on the, um, some statistical and uh, geological study. Uh, when we get the information for longitude, latitude, and the focal depth and the magnitude, then we can automatically create all the, all the parameters. Okay. So we can create the initial, um, uh, initial wave height, wave profile. So, and the do the simulation. And if we have, if we're getting more information, then we can redo the redo rerun the simulation because all the simulation can be finished uh, from Japan to to Taiwan is one minute resolution up to 500 kilometers. And if you want to do a large scale uh, large domain simulation, for example, from Chile to Taiwan, it takes about 30 minutes, but it's still faster than tsunami coming to Taiwan because from Chile to Taiwan, that takes about half day to one day, uh, much, much yeah. longer time. Yeah, tsunami has covered the speed of air, airplane. That's right, yes. So uh, then we, we validate, try to validate our model. So as you can see, uh, we pretend we don't know the, the detailed detail information for uh, 2011 Tohoku earthquake, and use our model to do the early uh, calculation and also use the complete parameter to do the complete simulation. So this column is the, uh, the, the parameter guessing from our model. This column is the complete parameters from GCMT. <coughs> and then here shows the result, like the one buoy in Japan, in Russia, in USA. Uh, ironically, it seems that our, our the, the parameter guessing from our model is more accurate than GCMT. <laughs> okay, that I don't know why, but it's, anyhow, it's an encouragement. So, so, so this is this is more accurate than that one. Yes, that's right. Yes, it's up to here. Yeah. But similar, I have to say similar. Okay. No, that, that means yeah. the the destructive and the parameter are accurate. I don't know. So uh, I will I will say this may be case by case. This case we we were lucky. Maybe the other case that one will be better. But anyhow, I think this is that can help people. But this is another problem that um, when the earthquake happened, you know, earthquake have 
many three at, at least three type of earthquake. One is the yeah. against to each other. The other is to leave each other. The other is horizontally. If the earthquake happens is for this kind of uh, movement, then no earth, no tsunami because there's no vertical disturbance. <coughs> but in our scenario, we always treat think of, uh, use the worst case scenario to 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 do the simulation. So it might give you people false alarm. So this case is okay because this is the the, the typical yeah uh, against to the kind of sub subsidence. But the most of people most of the cases might not that lucky. So later I'm going I will show you some how how do we overcome this problem. But before I reach to that, I'm going to show you some benefits of using ComCut. As you know, tsunami came maybe 200 years once. That means uh, we can only get funding 200 years once. <laughs> <laughs> but if you consider the, the typhoon or hurricane, they came to visit Taiwan four to five times per year. Okay, it's a thousand <coughs> times in terms of frequency, higher than tsunami. So uh, we <laughs> then we try to transfer tsunami into storm search. All right, actually very successful because uh, they all solve the shallow water equation, and uh, the storm search model usually don't cannot do the spherical coordinate large scale, but we can do that. This is our fundamental, right? So we add the wind stress and the pressure force and the, uh, uh, the radiation stress into the model, turns make the come come become the stone search model. And also we coupled uh, we coupled with TPSO tight model. They're all done by my students, um, Mr. Lin. Okay, Mr. Tai, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Tai. Oh, maybe you have another one. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the tight comparison is very, very satisfactory because you see, it's all, you cannot tell the difference. So this is the coupling with the Wolf model. Very, very good. And uh, last year. We, our model become the official uh, storm surge model, uh, which uh, provide early warning for our government. So in in the official website, our cent Central Weather Bureau will show you the, uh, this green line is the prediction from the storm surge model, and the, the dot line is the measurement from the buoy data, from the gauge data. So this comparison make us very nervous because you can watch this one. And if the dot uh, away from the green line, <laughs> that make uh, everybody nervous. All right, but anyhow, uh, you can see the result looks pretty good, pretty good. So now if you go to the official website in Taiwan, earthquake and the storm surge are all reported by us. Right. <clears throat> okay, so this is a, a very short <laughs> commercial time. Uh, so, so we have the, the fast calculation system that can provide early warning. And the next one is the historical record. So in Taiwan, actually, Taiwan is much smaller than Japan. The areas are 11 on 1 to the Japan is area, uh, the area. And the coastline is also much shorter. And uh, not to say the, the area and the coastline is shorter. The history is also shorter. The history in Taiwan is only 350 years, starting from 1661, uh, Kosinga over uh, take Tainan. So only 300, less than 400 years, we actually have a lot of tsunami event. So I try to tell people in Taiwan that Taiwan is not a tsunami free island. Based on the scenario study shows at least the three different scenario will, uh, will affect Taiwan. From the historical events, there are a lot of events will affect Taiwan, all right? So here shows, uh, I show, here, here have some events I, I just uh, show you briefly. Right. 
And also I send the students, including Mr. Tsai, to, to that, uh, <coughs> the coast area. And they didn't see the historical record, Not, uh, nothing. But they found another record that is uh, here. Here is around this area. They have four temples saying the tsunami event. There are four temples. They said the temples, one is in their dialogue. They said that because tsunami came, so they have to move their temple to the inland area because the original area was under the water. Okay. <clears throat> the second one uh, put the history here on the wall saying the same thing. The third one on the ceiling. So this is the, the, on the ceiling, they say the same thing. The last one, uh, they even explain why it happened. They say the Dutch people uh, came to Taiwan and uh, cut the, the, the tree and make the feng shui change. So, <laughs> okay. So for different temples saying the same thing, that means the event is very possible. And also we found the tsunami borders in Taiwan, two of them. So overall, we have a tsunami event, so many events in very short uh, history. So, uh, but I'm thinking, Okay, now I can do the fast calculation, but I have to wait for the, the event. And I can do the scenario study, but uh, does that mean I have to do scenario by scenario, do a lot? So I asked myself, or somebody also asked me, before the event, can I know where is the dangerous location of the tsunami source? And also, is that possible not using a computer? You know, when people are panicked and the earthquake destroyed the power system. Can you really get the information? So I am um, here, I'm going to briefly show you a brand new method for tsunami hazard mitigation. Uh, I use two different methods. One is called IIA, the other one is called STR. IIA is uh, impact intensity analysis. The STR is seismic uh, tsunami relationship. This, this idea actually coming from one historical event happened in northern Taiwan, the Jilong earthquake and the tsunami in 1867. In that event, um, pe people found the, the tsunami deposit. So this is me and the people found the deposit here. And uh, this one, I don't know. And that event was very important because uh, that event happened here. We have nuclear power plant one, two, four located nearby. And the distance from here to here is only 20 kilometers. And if you put 20 kilometers to this, like this place is Taipei City. So uh, it's very dangerous. And uh, this event was written by so many different languages, including Chinese, Japanese, and the Dutch, and the English, and the French, a lot of different languages. They, all, they said the tsunami actually up to, uh, the, the tsunami high was seven, six to seven meters. And uh, recently we found some evidence, not, not us, yeah, uh, my friend, that he said the tsunami high reached to 12 meters. So that 12 meters, actually, uh, if that one is true, then the nuclear power plant has to be shut down by law. Okay. So in this event, people found that the uh, tsunami wave high around these areas was six to seven meters, and they saw smokes because of volcano. And the sea bed exposed in this area. Okay. 100 dead. Very strangely, uh, we tried to uh, uh, rebuild this event, but failed. They, uh, from the uh, earthquake scientists, they say the event will be around magnitude 7 to 7.1. I use magnitude up to 8. The wave high only have 3 meters. 
no matter how I can only reach to three meters. So that means they have some other different uh, mechanism that cause the event. Very possible because they have Okinawa choke. So the, you can see the, the, the slope here is very steep. So my Okinawa choke, Liu Q change. Yeah, yeah. And uh, um, so we think it might cause because of the landslide tsunami. So underwater landslide makes tsunami. If we and also that we have uh, uh, undersea volcano. If we study this one, then we, no matter how we, I, I always cannot say I know this event is caused by the uh, the earthquake or landslide depth is 12 or 13 meters, kilometer, meters and the slope is 10 to 11. There are a lot of parameters make the, the answer cannot converge. So I'm thinking, uh, can the, the traditional way to study this case is that we we create another And uh, I always cannot say the number is enough. So I want to develop a method that can help us an analyze the potential tsunami systematically. So instead of simulating all the possible scenarios, I want to check back from this location, the, from the study location, to see which area is going to affect us. So this is important because uh, if you just just check the tsunami pass, uh, uh, the thread from the distance. You might be confused, just like the Japanese case. I give people this case. Here is Taiwan, northern Taiwan, Kilong. And here distance is about 100 to 100 kilometers, which is very close to Taiwan. And here is also maybe 80 kilometers. Two events are very close to each other. One, the energy property to the north, north direction, northern direction. The other case, the wave just attacked Kilong. So this case, these two cases are the, the sources are so close, but the results are totally different. So that give us uh, some, uh, give me the idea to 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 show you this new method called inten impact intensity analysis (IIA). So in this method, it's very straightforward. We have a study area, then we calculate each uh, unit source case by case, just like solve the solve the uh, sorry the Green's function for the tsunami, and uh, I record all the high wave, the largest wave high for each each case, and uh, this one at the end will give me this map. So this map shows that if a tsunami happened here, then the most of the energy will not transfer to Taiwan almost 0%. But if that happened here, then almost 100% and tsunami energy will arrive to this area. So, and also you can see here, we have another hot zone. And here, we have some here, some uh, location up to this, is dangerous to, to, to Kilong. That means at least I can very fast ignore the, the blue area because those area, even tsunami happened, that won't uh, affect my study area. <coughs> so like screen out a lot of impossible areas. <coughs> so this shows that previously A is A case is here. The energy will goes up. <coughs> B case will transfer to, to this area. So if we want to monitor the, the possible earth, uh, dangerous earthquake for nuclear power plants or for some buildings, then we know we, we know the priority. The highest priority we have to very be careful. The lowest priority maybe can be weight. So here shows some uh, uh, results for the yeah Taiwan is here. Yap is here. Do you remember the Yap work affect Taiwan here? You can see very clear the energy has up to this point. So the energy tsunami case will scenario will transfer to Taiwan. Also, the other case is this area. This area is colored in very light color, and the energy will go to Japan. 
<clears throat> so this can, this helps help us uh, to understand that in this event, in Kilong event, actually the most possible way uh, tsunami is caused underwater landslide. And the, this event, this results accidentally same as the result for my colleague. He used a boat to do the measurement. They have same result as mine. Okay, so very good. So then from this one, I also think maybe I can do something more because that means uh, if if this one in colored in blue, that means you need a very strong earthquake to generate enough energy to to affect Kilong. And here that means small earthquake, even a very tiny small earthquake can affect Kilong. So then we convert this map into STR. Because people probably won't understand IIA, but they might understand this map. So now I'm going to show you how to read this one. STR shows for this map, okay? And uh, the study area is here, here, here. Based on the uh, cent Center Weather Bureau, they say uh, they have different warning level for tsunami. One meter, three meter, six meter, so on and so forth. Here shows one meter result. That means earthquake in this area has to reach, only reach to 7.5. Then in Tainan, the study area in Tainan, will have one meter wave height. But if we, the earthquake happened here, then the earthquake has to be 9.5 to create one meter wave height in Tainan, because this side is on the B side of Tainan. The other one is three meter. That means here you have to reach about 7.8 to reach three meter wave high. And here is very huge. And the six meters here, you need to have maybe eight magnitude eight. So as you can see, here's a change. That's notorious Manila change. So for the village, the chief of the village, they only need this map. When they know the earthquake location and the magnitude, check this, this three map. They know what will the wave height be in their village. So that's why I say we don't need elect electronic device. Only three map will solve the case. I think that would be very helpful for the uh, for a different area. So finally, finally, as I said, I have the early warning system, but the parameters might not be accurate because the magnitude uh, 8.0, it might be this kind of shaking or this kind of shaking. This kind of shaking will cause a tsunami, but this kind of shaking will not. So how can we identify the shaking type? And then I'm thinking maybe I can use Ionosphere. When the huge earthquake or tsunami came, the ionosphere will be interfered. So interfered, I just need to watch the, the interference or disturbance for the, this is the Earth, this uh, ionosphere. I only want, need to watch the, 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 the surface, then I can know if the, the earthquake or tsunami really, really happened. How to do that? We, we don't need a satellite. We just need a GPS. So it's totally free. I, I, I believe everybody use car navigation for GPS. So GPS, you can, I, um, you can know the distance for, from GPS to your car, from GPS to your car. So bas basically three GPS, three satellites, you can know the location of your car. Four, you can do the calibration and the many better, okay? But the, the signal from the satellite to your car has to penetrate the ionosphere. If the ionosphere is calm, then your GPS will be very accurate. If the ionosphere is disturbing, have wavy surface, then your, location, your car locations will shifting. We'll have a very big mistake. So for car navigation, we try to ignore those 
uh, disturbance. But other people's trash is our treasure. In the tsunami hazard mitigation, we ignore the regular signal, keep the disturbance. So when the tsunami came, we, the, the, the uh, ionosphere was perturbed by tsunami, and we call this one ionami. So this is the result for 2011 Tohoku earthquake. You can see that this is the result from Kamka. This is the result from the Ionami. You can see that when the earthquake happened, you can see a very fast wave coming out. It's a shock wave, but it's very dis it will disappear very fast. Then followed by the tsunami wave, the one and the tsunami wave. Mr. Tsai is working on this one. He tried to create a map, uh, a, a model that can calculate the disturbance from ocean surface to the ionosphere surface. But for the current stage, we only need to identify if our parameter is correct. So when we see this one, then we know if the tsunami really generated or not. After that, we can follow by the parameters we create from our model, and that will largely reduce the false alarm. So here's you some uh, detailed results, the detailed comparison. So very, very good comparison. So my reach to my conclusion, sorry, takes a long time. Um, thank you, Dr. Simon Lin. Uh, because uh, without his help, we cannot reach to this state stage. And inundation and runoff are very important for the hazard mitigation. But inundation and the runoff depends on the good bathymetry data, because that's the key to the good inundation results. And we are trying to, pre to produce a low cost, robust tsunami early warning system. And uh, our NAMI from GPS can help us to identify the tsunami. IA and STR can be very useful, as I said. And I, at the end, we want to contribute to the Society for Tsunami Hazard Mitigation. Okay, so this is my talk, and thank you very much. <laughs> There's no time for question, right? I, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, I just want to confirm the. Uh, uh, the impact intensity analysis still a forward simulation. It's only you only take the take into account the green functions. Yeah, okay. So you just uh, basically you don't want to see what is the unit and the unit source you want to see the effect on the wave. That that's it. So you still have to. I mean, you know, right, you still right, have right. To, it's, uh, it's not inversion method. No, I, I can do the inversion. No, Actually, course. very very simple. Yeah, but uh, inversion cannot do the inundation. Yeah, yeah, based yeah, on this yeah, method, yeah, yeah. so I don't want to use them this to do the to do the inversion because we have the very fast calculation finish in one minute. I don't need that. You know, it's, it's the Sorry. I mean it's the key long uh, tsunami well understood. I mean it could be twelve meters and then the previous only show one meter. So do you think that issue is fully understood the key long? Uh, I cannot say fully, but. Much better than before. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then about the uh, tsunami and the um, uh, seismic uh, relationship, you basically use using the uh, you know the, the previous result you know and try to see uh, the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's okay. Yeah. No, not no. We have we have built a a a lot of. You're running different scales of. of no no of no the, no because uh, this is a linear system. So we do a one meter simulation, we can extend to yeah. 0 0.5, 0 0.3, mm -hmm. 1.2, something. Yeah. The key is that there's a very compli complex uh, calculation from IAA to STR. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to uh, transfer those information back to yes. magnitude. Okay. So that's the difficulty. Yeah. And the, uh, the, uh, the atmosphere information, I think, uh, I mean that's very clever actually, but uh, it's because uh, people try to use the ionic uh, ionosphere information try to to predict the earthquake, uh, the happening the earthquake. But what you're doing is actually very clever. You only use the uh, the informations 
of where you call them the noise, right? right. But then, um, uh, I don't know about the, I mean, it's obvious that we can do that if earthquake nearby, but if, if earthquake, I don't know, it's, it, it, it actually will have big disturbance on the sea surface. Mm -hmm. You think that's very significant. Mm -hmm. So the, the GPS emission can be caught, but then uh, you don't have anything there, right? On, on the side, near the side. We don't need the, we don't need the, the, the because uh, we, we need, um, we need GPS, we don't need GPS break on, on that side, just mm -hmm. close to the side would be now. Yeah. Yes. So, but I know, if, if it's say like, yeah, and there was no GPS, you know, measure your head over there. Uh, yeah, then we, we need to, to put some, it's very, it's a relative cheap, actually. Uh, put put to the uh, the GPS uh, GPS station yes yeah yeah but 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 then in a, you know tsunami buoy is still quite expensive right several millions <laughs> yeah. for a few there okay yeah. thank you but this is this is very clever yeah okay so um, we still have one okay. more speaker it's uh, Dr Eric Yen uh, he will be giving a talk on disaster mitigation collaboration in Asia current status. <laughs> Dr. Eric? Yes. Can I uh, send us your presentation? We can stream it from uh, our side on YouTube. For the uh, sessions in the afternoon, right? Or yes, okay. now as well. Otherwise, now the, on YouTube, it's only your camera that is shown. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh. We can do the adjustment in the. Uh, okay. Okay then. Okay. Okay. Let's finish my my presentation in ten minutes, and then we That's do the uh, yeah, yeah adjustment uh, after lunch. So uh, <clears throat> my presentation is about the uh, current uh, regional collaboration on disaster mitigation. But firstly, I have to uh, explain the uh, uh, DMCC, as mentioned in the previous uh, 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 speakers. Okay. That's the uh, Disaster Mitigation Competence Center. That's uh, one of the eight competence centers in the EGI Engage project. Yeah. The EGI Engage project <coughs> yeah, started from uh, March 2015 and ended in this month. And with partners from Taiwan, Philippines, <coughs> uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Germany. In the beginning, we have uh, Thailand as a partner, but turns out uh, 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 Thailand cannot join us uh, uh, in the end. So the goal is to improve the strategy of pre prevention and reduction of disaster. Uh, uh, simply speaking, in the uh, DMCC collaboration, we, uh, we've we been uh, build up the collaboration uh, among the uh, scientific group, the user community, the uh, uh, infrastructure and also the uh, application support community. So we've been finished uh, uh, several case study as presented by Professor Wu on the tsunami and also others uh, which will be mentioned in later. So in this project, <coughs> which is going to, to end in this week, tomorrow, so the DMCC uh, 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 produced uh, three deliverables as listed, listed here. So we generated two simulation portals. The first one is uh, the, the wave portal for the weather simulation. The second one is the wave portal for the tsunami uh, wave propagation, which will be demonstrated in the end, in the afternoon uh, at uh, 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock by Dr. Tsai. So uh, uh, based on the works uh, from the DMCC uh, leading by uh, Professor Simon Ling, actually <coughs> our our uh, collaboration with the European uh, e-science projects has been could be dated from uh, 10 years ago. So we've been working based on the uh, e-infrastructure uh, on the uh, uh, disaster mitigation has been uh, uh, <coughs> several years. So uh, DM, DMCC is the latest one. So it's very naturally that uh, <coughs> we uh, combine the uh, collaboration efforts of the DMCC and also the APEN. So in APEN last year, we uh, initiated the uh, disaster mitigation working group here uh, because we can uh, reach out to almost every Asia 
uh, countries. So in this uh, uh, working group, we like to uh, <coughs> sharing the knowledge and experiences and resources from the uh, case study from uh, 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 DMCC. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, we we hosting a disaster mitigation working group like today in a, in almost every APEC meeting in the past two <coughs> years, and we'll keep going. Uh, going on so uh, it's very uh, it's very uh, useful to have th such a collaboration between the uh, GMCC and also the uh, APEN disaster mitigation uh, working group as I mentioned in my previous slide uh, <coughs> actually the the working group also likes to uh, working with other APEN working groups such as uh, agriculture and also the cloud computing working groups together so we can uh, engage more uh, local user communities from different countries and also resources from different Asia countries together. Again, the, the, the approach of deep, deep understanding has been proved to be uh, very, very essential and useful for the disaster mitigation. And <clears throat> here's the, uh, 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 that's the uh, uh, common interest in terms of the disasters in Asia countries. Um, Besides, the, the graph also showing the uh, connections because some uh, most of the time the hazard comes not just uh, one by one. Uh, some of them are relationships between the multi hazards. So that 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 scenario has to be uh, 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 taken into account. And in the uh, <coughs> lower half of this graph, so based on the, uh, the study, and research from the scientific group like Professor Wu. They provide us the innovative uh, simulation models. So we use this model to the studies. And then only from the case study, we can improve the number theory. And so, so that's the uh, cycles of the uh, same approach. <clears throat> so in the uh, past two years in the DMCC, We've been working together uh, with the uh, uh, Philippines on the uh, type uh, uh, <coughs> mentioned by Professor Wu, and also working with the Malaysia on the uh, Malaysia FRAP has been uh, demonstrated by uh, Professor Ling. And also, uh, we have the uh, simulation result from Thailand on the Thailand FRAP case. And we are currently working with uh, Basuki in Indo Indonesia on the uh, long distance dust transportation uh, from the uh, forest fires. So in last year, uh, or two years ago, uh, in the APM meeting, Disaster Mitigation Working Group, we have the uh, a participant from the poll. So they are also uh, bring their case study to this working group, and then we can work, work together. <coughs> so this is the, the uh, another models of these collaborations. So in the right hand side, for the past uh, two to five years, we've been uh, uh, <coughs> developing the uh, uh, tsunami simulation, weather simulation, and storm surge simulation models. So they are accessible through the web interface. That means the user could use, could make use of the simulations just using your browsers. And then we are collecting all the materials <coughs> from the case studies and keep on sharing those uh, results and also knowledges, everything, data from the case studies to to support the future cases, to support the other case studies in different inter, uh, 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 countries. And then we we are um, closely integrated with the regional infrastructures to support the uh, uh, federations of the uh, 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 resources from uh, different places. And we, as I mentioned, we've been uh, uh, build up the uh, collaboration framework from the scientific a scientist from the end users, from the uh, application developer, from the IT support, and also from the infrastructures. And here's the uh, 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 the integration of the uh, atmospheric model and also the oceanic models from the uh, Philippine Haibong Haiyan case studies. So because of the time, I think I should skip those. And in the DMCC collaboration, actually the uh, <coughs> the partners of Germany that provide the advanced visualization facilities for these collaborations. So uh, <coughs> you can have a new new ways of 
the visualization of the disasters in the details. And here are the uh, user interfaces of the uh, ICOM card systems. And also the wall. And the storm surge uh, uh, systems will be uh, 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 demonstrated in the afternoon. So in the future, uh, the multi-hazard risk analysis, including the uh, geophysical uh, characteristics and the triggers, and also the combination of, of uh, among different hazards will be uh, in account. But that's up to the case study. So we like to have a a, a every partners in 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 Asia partners. They could. We welcome you could uh, bring your resources, your case study, your users together. The collaboration is always open. Yes. Several uh, lessons learned from the past few years from the DMCC case studies you know, here were listed for your reference. Uh, and so based on the deep understanding and the regional infrastructures, so we providing the simulation portals, we keep working on uh, different case studies in different countries, and we hope to uh, uh, provide the uh, services of the knowledge base to share. Uh, so uh, maybe we don't have time to talk, to talk about this. That's the, uh, as I mentioned, the DMCC, the EGI Engage project you will end tomorrow. Uh, the next phase <coughs> will be the uh, EOAC projects uh, funded by European Commission. That means uh, 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 what we call it that, yeah. Open Science Cloud, yeah. <clears throat> and we, um, yeah, yeah, with DM, DMCC, is an, uh, uh, we have another uh, a phase of the disaster mitigation competence center in the new phase uh, of the uh, European funded e-science project called uh, Open Science Cloud, started from next year, the January 2018, uh, for, th for three years. So the DMCC will keep on uh, building up the, the capacity on the disaster mitigation based on the numerical mm -hmm. simulations and uh, facilitate, facilitate the sharing of all, all kinds of resources and extending the collaboration, especially uh, working together with the APEN. And in the future, we ho also uh, like to uh, work, work with APEN to, uh, to have funded support from the Asia Connect. So DMCC. Yeah, maybe we can have a detailed discussion in the afternoon or in tomorrow. So the partners of the DMCC, we have uh, eight uh, partners from uh, eight uh, uh, Asia countries and also four uh, European countries together. So in this collaboration, we like to have a case study in almost every uh, uh, partner countries. So the this table is still open. So uh, because the uh, project now is, uh, is uh, granted, so we have time to uh, finalize the case study from uh, each country and the contributions from uh, different uh, countries. So uh, some of the details of the uh, tasks and the variables of the DMCC. So that's the uh, 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 roughly the current collaboration on the disaster mitigation in Asia, especially through the uh, APEN uh, collaboration frameworks. So uh, that's the end of the this session. If there is any com uh, comment or questions, just <laughs> I think they're hungry already. Okay. okay. Right. So we'll probably end the session this this for this lunch, and then please come back later in the afternoon. What time? One thirty. One thirty. Yeah. Come back one thirty. Thank you. Tell them, tell them they, they, they can have breakfast. <laughs> no, so I uh, I just send you all the uh, presentation slides. So uh, 